So many people are getting the DaVinci Resolve speed editors in to use with the new cut page, and a lot of people aren't used to using the cut page. So today I've got seven features that can easily go overlooked. Let's check them out, I'll show you how they work. Just to get everyone on the same playing field, we are in DaVinci Resolve version 17. It's the current beta version as of uh, 2021 here, early 2021. And down here at the timeline, I have a selection of clips from a recent graffiti mural shoot. And the first tip I wanna show you, you don't actually need the speed editor for, which is awesome. So you're gonna take your mouse, you're gonna go down to the bottom timeline. And if you park it right over the top head of that playhead, you can get some new options. So this is a right click. And by doing that, you have an option to cut the clip, which is um, DaVinci calls split. And I'm gonna undo that, okay? Double tapping on my speed editor or Command Z. The other thing you can do is not just split, but you can use this to select left and right of the playhead. So right click on it, and I wanna take everything to the left of the playhead, got it like that, and then you can copy and paste this into another sequence. So you can say edit, copy, and here's another timeline. If we choose our timeline down here, we can say edit, paste. And you can see we have all of those beginning clips and shots from the one timeline put into the next. The reason this is helpful is maybe you're gonna do lots of versions of something and you like one segment that you kind of put together on one timeline. It's great to just be able to copy and paste it and keep versioning uh, the longer timeline in another one. And you do that all right in the cut page. Ripple Overwrite is a great feature to DaVinci Resolve. It's this button right here on the DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor. It works a lot like Ripple Delete, except what it's doing is replacing the clip on the timeline instead of removing it. But the special trick that it has is it's gonna extend the duration based off what the incoming length is. So here I've got a short clip, this one that has this Taylor graphic. I wanna replace this with a longer clip and have the rest of the timeline just kinda of ripple out and extend during the process. So I'm gonna click Source. And let's find a shot that I like. You know, maybe this clip right here will work. We can go to the beginning of it, mark an endpoint, mark an out point, and I know that's still quite a bit longer than what's there on the timeline. I tap ripple overwrite, and it has just, if I clip timeline, it has just made a much longer clip and replaced what was there with the new one. So ripple overwrite, it's super powerful because it's pushing the rest of the timeline out of the way or shrinking it up. So to show you ripple right works in the other way, I'm gonna take this and use a shorter clip. So if we click source again, we'll go find, uh, let's take a, a real short clip. Why don't we go in further on this one here. We can mark an in point and just take a couple beats of it, mark an out point, And then we're gonna go say ripple over right. And just like that, if we go back down the timeline, that other shot is gone and we have a new shot in its place, which is much shorter. So the next tip I've got in the cut page here with the speed editor is gonna to be to use this audio trim button. So with that on now, we can easily cut to the beginning of a sound bite with seeing giant waveforms on the timeline. I'll show you what I mean. So we have an interview here. This is the beginning of answering a question. All right. It's just a ton of fun. Yeah, okay. I met Santino my... All right, so to trim that up, it's really easy. So you can see it right now like little tiny waveforms, but what that button does is it makes them giant and it gets rid of your thumbnails. So if I say trim in with the speed editor, hold that down. And we can see right there is where the beginning of the sound bite happens. Release it. I met Santino my... So you can see by having that giant view, that helps a lot. If it's off, by, which is what it is by default, I think, and it's grayed out, you're gonna see uh, the thumbnails move, but I don't think that's as okay. useful. So like, let's say we wanna trim the tail of this clip. We'll say trim out. Like that doesn't do much for me because I've already got, if I hold it, you've already got um, sort of a split view of seeing your incoming and outcoming frames in this window up here. So I think, in my opinion, it makes sense. Just leave that audio trim button on all the time and that way if you're cutting audio or not it's ready to go so this gives you giant giant audio waveforms hey real quick i want to call a timeout and welcome you if you're new here my name's chadwick and this is creative video tips where i help you create videos that make a difference and stand out if that's the kind of thing you're into click subscribe right now so you don't miss my tip next week 
Now let's jump back in the computer and I'm gonna show you all about the fast review button. Then to use it, you tap the source button, which gets you into source tape, which is this guy right here. And then if you go down here, this is where the button is it's called fast review. What it is doing is it's kind of like writing the JKL for you. It's kind of automated. What it's doing is if it's a longer clip, it's gonna play faster. If it's a shorter clip, it's gonna slow down so you can catch what's going on. So it lets you get through a ton of material much quicker if you're just trying to find a shot here or there. So let's click it and we can see it's going sort of at a moderate speed, but now it's to a longer clip, so it's playing much faster. And then let's just move ahead here. You can kind of see it's moving much quicker on this one because it's a longer clip and then it's slowed down as it's at a shorter clip. And then if you get to something like an interview, which is what I have here at the end, you can definitely see a giant difference in the playback speed with fast review. So I'll click that there, he's moving real quick. Now she is just flying. It's just, the timeline is just ripping through. You can see down here how quickly we're moving through everything. So that's fast review and that lets you see a lot of stuff really quickly in the cut page. So next up is clip duration. Clip duration I think is new to Resolve 17 and what it's gonna let you do is you can click on a clip, you can right clip and say change clip duration. You can also click on it and say command D which is the same in Final Cut Pro if you're using Final Cut Pro. And instead of this being one and two seconds or one and two frames, we can say I want it to be exactly one second. Click change and it just takes it off the tail and it ripples the rest of the timeline for you. What's really powerful about this is you can actually select multiples. So you can drag a marquee over it and then say Command D or the other one is right clip and say change clip duration. And now we can say let's make all of them one second, say change and boom. So this is really helpful if you have varying lengths of clips but you wanna uniform them up, you wanna Maybe have them hit with a certain beat on a music and that is a certain tempo and you kind of figure out what that is. This has a lot of uses. Slideshows, why don't you let me know how you're going to use it in the comments below. The boring detector is not new in DaVinci Resolve 17, but it's probably underutilized because of the name. And what the boring detector is, it's it's been around for a while. It is actually over here. It has a little like Z's, like it's a sleeping icon, which I think is kind of humorous. You click the boring detector and it's gonna give you two options. One, it's gonna let you find clips that are longer than a specified length. And the other one is to help you find jump cuts to, if you have maybe like a, a little edit that you had done and that was sort of a mistake, it's gonna let you find those quickly. So the way it's set up right now is I have edits longer than five seconds are boring and edits shorter than five frames. So this is seconds and then frames. Those are gonna be indicated as a jump cut. And it kind of gives you the explanation with the graphic of what it's going to do. So this one's going to give you like this sort of highlighted dark area and this one's going to give you a red mark. Usually because red's bad and you want to fix it. So let's click analyze and we'll find out if we have any jump cuts or boring clips in our timeline. And we do. <laughs> I purposely had a clip. I'll just jog over to it right here. This one is super short. It's just a couple frames long. Let's see, one, two, three, three frames long. So what that's doing, it's pointing out exactly where those are at. If we wanna delete them, we could go to the speed editor, say ripple delete, and it takes care of it. And once it does that, it removes it from our view here in the timeline of things that are sort of highlighted. So if you don't know this about the cut page, the top view is all of our clips. That's the whole timeline beginning to end. And the bottom is always a zoomed in view. So if we want to see our boring clips, we'll go back over here to the speed editor. We're going to scroll. This clip here is apparently boring from this section to this section because it is longer than the specified five seconds long. So we'll say analyze. That's the boring section of it. I can go to the speed editor, say trim out, and, and that will just go away as soon as that is shorter than five seconds long. So we can go through here real quick and get rid of the, the quote unquote boring parts. I think it's a funny term that they decided to choose, but it, uh, it definitely, definitely, uh, you know, makes you pay attention to it, right? One last thing about the boring detector I want to mention is if you decide, hey, I, I don't think that's boring and it's got that highlighted, the way you get rid of it is you just tap the icon over here again and it gets rid of that highlighted section for you. You don't have to make it shorter. It's just showing you ideas of 
where you might want to consider trimming things up or, or deleting a jump cut. Real quick, before I move on to the last tip, I want you to leave a comment down below right now and let me know what's the hardest part of the cut page for you. What doesn't make sense? What can I maybe help you with? So the last tip I want to show you in the cut page, which is super worth knowing about and using is source tape. The source tape lets you view a ton of clips all at once. It's essentially a string out without having to make a string out. That's what makes the cut page so great. So if I tap source on my speed editor here, it's going to bring up every single clip that I have in the project. It's like searching through all my bins. It's doing all that assistant editor work for me. And so we can see here at the beginning, I've got a super long half hour long uh, interview clip and I can just scroll through my search style until I get towards the end where I have some shorter b-roll clips and then within here you know it is also showing me in the sort of bin bucket area it's showing me it's highlighting me where I am throughout my project where that clip is that I'm over here on the right side in source tape so by scrolling back over here it, it's kind of showing me oh I'm on that clip right there it's a b01 C011. And what's even cooler about this is it lets me quickly jump between different zoom views. So when I'm in here, I can tap source again. That's going to take me to all of those clips there from this day right here. This is from December 31st. So um, you can see that's super powerful because that wasn't even a bin I made. That was just in a bin of a bunch of footage. If you want to go back, you can hit the escape button. It'll take you back to see all of the footage again. And that's all sort of controlled here by how you sort your media in the uh, this bin area. So right now they're sorted by time code. Again, if I want to just jump back to the, the um, source tape, this is where all the clips are. If you want to just see it in a more traditional view, you can click source, which is just one clip at a time. And that's boring. Like, that's an old school. If you want to do that, just do that in the edit page, OK? The cut page is all about source tape. So if you're not using source tape, check that out. And the other thing I was going to tell you about source tape, if you have the speed editor, you have jog and you have scroll and shuttle. So what jog is going to let me do is a little bit more refined version of like scrubbing through, skimming through a clip. So I hit jog. And then as I turn the search dial, you can see my waveforms are way, way more blown in and zoomed in, which is great if I want to mark it in at a very specific point and an out at a specific point. That lets me do that with Jog. If you don't want that and you just want to be able to move and not have all of those waveforms going crazy underneath, you hit scroll and that lets you see them without them moving underneath the playhead. So it's a different type of experience. It's kind of like the difference between the top timeline down here at the bottom where you see the whole everything at once and the bottom one where the footage moves underneath your playhead. So that is source tape and I strongly suggest you use it. You get used to using it because it can save you a lot of time. Now I officially certify you as a Creative Video Tips DaVinci Resolve cut page master. If you got anything out of this video please click the like button and I'll see you in the next video.